Hi everyone, Ed McGrogan here from Tennis.com here with senior writer Pete Bodo. Pete, today I want to talk about U.S. tennis. It's a topic that you and I as tennis professionals probably tire of hearing of, but it's a question that when I talk to casual fans, it's never far from their tongue. Is there actually something wrong with U.S. tennis? Because that's what they always ask me about. Well, there is something wrong with U.S. tennis. We have no players. I mean, this is a, a real tough situation. Look, but I don't think there's anything. I think what you look for in a worst-case scenario is some kind of an institutional failure or some kind of a social large-term failure of some kind. I don't think we have that by, by any stretch. In fact, we've got a couple top 20 guys. Quarry and Isner both have top 15 talent even. You know, just struggling a little bit. You had a Donald Young who's been a prodigy, but he hasn't really quite developed the way everybody had hoped. So it's kind of bad, you know, bad luck in a sense. I mean, look, you look at the great Swedish teams after Bjorn Borg. They have Borg, then they have Wielander, then they have Edberg, then they have Nystrom, and all these great guys. Well, what happened there? Well, they, you know, they haven't had a player. Robin Soderling is the last player they had of any repute in a long time. I'm a big fan of the cyclical theory that basically, you know, it sort of runs in cycles and all it takes is one or two good players to come along, get things kick-started, and suddenly got a new generation. Yeah, or maybe even one or good, good performance by the Davis Cup team or something like that. Now, the reason I ask you this is because the U.S. last week in just eight days lost two home ties in Davis Cup and Fed Cup where they were pretty much favored in both, even though they did have some of their top players, of course, missing. Isner, Serena, Sloan Stevens. How much of a PR hit do you think you know, those two losses took for the U.S.? Well, you know, it's funny. It wasn't that much of a PR hit because, unfortunately, in my opinion, Fed Cup and Davis Cup are really under-promoted, under, under-publicized. The media tends to ignore it. It goes way back to, you know, for ages now. Pete Sampras won the Davis Cup for single-handedly in Moscow, winning three matches, two singles and part of the doubles, and there was almost no coverage of it. So, you know, it's, it's really always been a struggle here. I think it was a particularly bad weekend, no. I mean, I don't believe we've ever fallen out of the world group, and now we're in a position again where we may have to be in a play where we are in a playoff round, we're going to have to beat somebody to stay in the world group. The Fed Cup, well, you know, I think if Serena Williams and Sloane Stevens, our best players, had been there, I think, you know, it would have been a different story, no question about that. So, yeah, you have to, you know, you, know, you have to sort of temper the disappointment of this otherwise, you know, horrific weekend with the fact that, no, our, we did not have the eight teams out there in, in either case, you know, and, and B, it's a tough time in general for American tennis. Yeah, what I was going to follow up with is about Fed Cup. You know, Serena and Sloan, they didn't play, but, you know, without a doubt, that's a great team if they are, if and when they are healthy. However, you know, for Davis Cup, it's maybe a different story. Isner, Query, Bryan Brothers, this core has been around for quite a while now since Roddick and Blake moved on. You know, going forward, do you feel that Jim Courier, the captain of the Davis Cup team, should make any adjustments, or you know, is he in any position to with the state of the men's players? Well, it's hard to make any adjustments in Davis Cup because you basically are obliged to give your best players the first shot. I mean, you'd be crazy not to because, you know, you wouldn't want to have, you know, you wouldn't want to tell Roger Federer that he can't play because Stan Wawrinka and a guy who's ranked number 72 want, want to play. So basically, he, he's sort of boxed in to offering a spot for the top players. You know, the good news in that is that basically the top players have been very supportive. Sam Querrey has been very supportive. John Isner has been very supportive. I think Query's loss in the Davis Cup, that in that horrific match, second match, was 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 a real sort of heartbreaker, and it was a stunning, stunning upset. And he really maybe hasn't come along as much as a Davis Cup player as he would want him to. Isner, on the other hand, is a very good player, and the Bryan brothers are obviously the gold standard in doubles. So fundamentally, the Bryan brothers and Isner together ought to be able, with any luck, to actually carry the team far. Yeah, we'll see how they do when they battle in relegation ties, like you said. Fed Cup and Davis Cup in precarious positions. I'm Ed McGrogan here with Pete Bodo, Tennis.com.